On today's Maker Mashup, part three of our DIY Core XY 3D printer build series. So today is day three of our 3D printer build, and today we're gonna to be putting a lot of different parts on the printer, and it's really gonna look a lot like a 3D printer when we're done. What sort of parts are we gonna be putting on? Well, we're gonna be putting on all the back parts, so everything that's on the back of the printer. Now, you don't see it, but these are important parts for the entire printer build overall. We're also gonna be working on the electronics. Now, some of the electronics that we're gonna do, this is a template that you're gonna print and it's gonna give you the ability to mark out exactly where you're gonna to want to put your power supply. And that template will go ahead and mark all the holes. So we're gonna have a little bit of drilling today into that bottom plate so we can get things set up there. We're also gonna be working on other things like the front display. We'll be putting this on, getting the electronics for that. We won't do any of the wiring today, but we're gonna get everything laid out where we want it on the inside of the electronics enclosure. And then what we're gonna do is also do a lot of the 3D printer parts. We'll be working on uh, the spool mount, we'll be working on the Bowden tube adapter that allows you to feed the filament all the way up to the nozzle. So we'll be working on all of these little bits and pieces of the 3D printer. And then we'll get back to putting the belts on and the carriage. But it's important to do this step first because it sets everything up for the rest of the videos. So with all of that said, let's get to work. Day three of our 3D printer build has quite a laundry list. We're gonna be installing the main board and the power supply into the electronics enclosure. And then we're going to be installing many of the 3D printed parts on the outside of the printer. After that, we'll wrap everything up by installing some of the stepper wires and channel molding, getting everything ready for us to go ahead and work on the carriage and the final electronics videos. In the 3D printed parts, you'll find this handy dandy one millimeter template that's going to allow you to mark the holes where the power supply is going to go in your electronics enclosure. Now for this build, I'm going to put one power supply in, but if you wanted to put two, the build will easily support two power supplies, one for your heat bed and one for your main electronics. The thicker side of the template is where you'll screw down the wires onto the power supply. You can see I used the rear cover switch as a guide where to place the first power supply and optionally your second power supply. Now we're gonna turn the printer on its side and we're gonna drill where we marked our initial holes. Make sure that you spray out and remove any of the shavings. These shavings will certainly interfere with any electronics. Now you'll just use the M4 screws to mount the power supply. Now it's time to mount the fan cover. You're gonna use two M4 button head screws, one on each side of the power supply. This next step is probably the hardest part of the entire build. You're gonna to need to drop your T-nuts into the channel and then use M3 screws to attach the back plating. Now there's four back plates, two of them are for the fan grill one for the power and then the other one for the USB. This is pretty time consuming and it is a little difficult, but it's well worth the challenge. Now we're gonna use one of the M3 pan head screws to install this cable relief for the heat bed. You're gonna to wanna to print this in TPU or PETG, something that will not start to soften with the heat bed's temperature. Now we're gonna insert the USB extension. This panel mount version allows you to have quick and easy access to USB from the back of the printer. We're just gonna take this and use the provided Phillips head screws and screw this into the back of the 3D printer. 
Now you may also notice that the rear of the printer now has two of the bonding plates that were not there from the original frame video. I actually missed putting those on, so you're going to want to add those to the back of your 3D printer. You should have 12 of these plates total. Now I've pre-assembled the socket and switch for the back of the printer and we're going to use a glue gun here to simply attach a little bit of glue around the outside of the socket and then that's what's going to hold this permanently inside the 3D print here. Be careful the glue is very hot and you just need to feed the wires in. You're going to want to make sure that you get a socket that is also for your particular region of electrical wiring. Now let's feed the wires from the heat bed. We're going to feed these in so that way we can make sure that the placement of our electronics in the enclosure are going to be able to reach everything. The hole on the right is the one that's designed to hold the heat bed wires. The other hole will be for the main carriage wiring. When picking a place to mount your main board, make sure you test some of the connections and make sure that things like the thermistor and the USB port all reach to where you want to mount the main board. Since this is really an open design, you can pick any place you'd like to mount the main board and the MOSFET in the printer. Now we're just going to use a pen to mark the locations of where we're going to drill the holes for the main board and the MOSFET. When drilling the holes for these, I found it really helpful to take a board and place it under the 3D printer. And then once you do that, you can use a drill and drill directly right into the wood. And that's how you know you've gone all the way through and it makes cleanup a little bit easier. Make sure you use some sort of shop vac or something else to clean out all of the shavings to make sure that they don't short on any of the electronics. Both the main board mount and the MOSFED mount use an M3 screw and a nut on the other side to mount everything to the enclosure. The last step of the main board and MOSFET installation is to use these M3 button head screws and use them to just attach the main board to the mounting brackets. Make sure you don't over tighten these as you can crack the mount if you tighten the screws too tightly or damage the main board itself. They should be snug and just hold the board down. Assembling the front display panel goes pretty quickly. We're going to flip it around to the back and then we're going to insert the TFT24 display here and we're going to use some M3 button head screws or you can use socket head screws. Either will work fine here and we're just going to attach it to the 3D print. We're going to be using the TFT24 display in emulator mode but it does support a touchscreen mode. So should you decide later on that you want to have touchscreen support for your 3D printer, this TFT24 display does support both and you'll just need to set that up separately. Once the TFT24 is installed, we're going to add the button to the front panel here and then we're going to drop in these M5 20 millimeter screws and that will attach it to the aluminum extrusion of the 2080. There's no need to over tighten these, so we're just going to want them snug and we're going to easily be able to remove this later on when we do the second electronics video and hook up the wires for the display. The spool mount uses some M3 socket cap screws, 8mm in length, and then quickly attaches to the 2040 extrusion. Now we're going to go ahead and insert this M10 fitting into the print. It just screws in pretty easily, but you may require a set of pliers or a wrench to get it all the way down snugly into the 3D print. Once you've got that done, we're going to take some M5 screws and a T-nut, and we're going to prepare the print to attach to the 2020 extrusion here. Now the printer is a direct drive printer, but this Bowden tube just makes the management of the filament getting to the carriage much easier. 
Make sure you have everything aligned by inserting a small piece of filament just to make sure that it flows into the Bowden tube. Now we're going to go ahead and insert the stepper wires into the stepper. One end is specifically designed for the steppers themselves. And then after that, we're going to feed the wire into the channel of our 2040 extrusion. These extrusion covers will cover the entire extrusion length and you'll be able to keep the wires nice and neat. These just snap into place once you've got the wires all lined up and in the channel. So here's a trick for printing these 2020 extrusion covers. Instead of printing multiple ones, go into your slicer settings and turn off uniform scaling. Then change your Y axis to 190 millimeters, and then you can multiply the model. Once you've multiplied it, two of these will cover the length of the 2040 extrusion that's covering your stepper wires. Now we're also going to hook up our Z steppers as well. We're going to use the same cables, but you're going to require a little bit of cable management here. I use some black zip ties to get everything all nice and neat inside the enclosure. It's a lot easier if you do your wire management while you're putting the printer together instead of doing it afterwards. Now we're going to insert the stepper wire into the main board. There are two spots for each one of the Z steppers on the Z axis. The SKR version 1.4 breaks both of them out for you. Once we have both of the Z axis installed, the next step is to install the X and Y. The right hand stepper goes into the Y port, which is on the left side. And then the left hand stepper goes into the X port, which is on the right hand side. This looks confusing, but if you follow the video here, it's easy to assemble this. So today we made some great progress on the printer. It's really starting to come together and we've got a lot of the components in the electronics enclosure. So we're setting everything up to start working on the carriage and getting the belt system all together. So we'll have that in the upcoming video. Now, I do want to point out something that we missed from the first video. If you take a look right back here, there is a missing bonding plate. Now I added it in this video and pointed it out earlier in the video, but you want to make sure that you install this because it really does help with the forces that go uh, lateral against the printer and it just adds to the overall rigidity. So definitely something that you want to add in there. And I did update the bill of materials as well to include those extra plates. So I do want to point out also that the drawing for the acrylic plate that will go on top of our electronics enclosure is going to be part of this video. I included it in the Thingiverse files. I suggest if you're this far in your build to order that acrylic plate now. It will take the vendor about 10 days to get the plate to you. So unless you have a local uh, resource for acrylic and laser cutting, you're going to find out that it's going to take you a while to get this uh, cover plate for the electronics. So ordering it now is probably your best bet. So if you're having any trouble with your build, please feel free to reach out to our channel discord and links for that are in the description. And there is also a layer fuse subreddit. So if you have questions and you don't want to participate in the discord, you can go and reach out to our subreddit and links for that are also in the description. So with that is going to bring the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss the next upcoming video in our series. So with that, I'm going to say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.